Well, the interplay between television and politics is very interesting because it can be really good or it can be really destructive. I find that television news reporting and commentary is these days very much like echo journalism. Not a lot of people doing original work. Somebody might get an interview, someone else will repeat it as though they got the interview, simply repeat what was heard. There can be a meme put out that is completely wrong about something you said, and of course because of social media and how fast everything goes, it becomes the thing. So it can be, you have to be always very careful. When I was first elected in 94, Willie Brown was still the Speaker of the House, and he had been for 25 years in California. And he said, everything you say, every word, every sentence, every interview, imagine it on the front page of the LA Times or the New York Times, because it will be. Um, and so that kind of informs it, especially with television, because television is instantaneous. If I tell you something, well, I'm in Texas, and I'm doing a 13-hour speech so that an anti-abortion bill doesn't pass. At first, nobody knows. It's not a TV show. We don't get the Texas legislature here. Then people start to hear. Then the news shows up. Then they start filming it. Then they start broadcasting it. Then everybody starts tweeting now. But it's really television that brings the picture to you. And to watch her stand on the floor, not allowed to go to a bathroom for 13 hours, not allowed to eat or drink or even lean on her desk, that's very powerful television. And that's politics. She's a state senator. But see, it's not just politics. It's heroism. It's history. Uh, in a lot of ways, people don't know what you do in state legislatures. They have no idea. You might be there till 3 in the morning trying to argue that students should be able to um, take art and not have it be cut out of the budget. Nobody knows you're doing that. But if somebody shows that and they see you on television, then they know you're doing it. And it's really very much the same thing about sort of the uh, faux historic shows where they'll show a moment in time and they'll show either someone playing you or, you know, clips. There is nothing more important than the information that television has gotten out to everybody. Um, but you do have to be very wary when you're running for office about what's caught. Nowadays, it's not so much television as it's iPhones. I was never wary running for office because I always think before I speak. I mean, I don't know why, but I really do. I um, rarely misspeak. I rarely have to say, oh, 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 that was off the record. I didn't mean it. I mean, you have to know, you have to say it's off the record before you say it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be kind of quick about it. So I had no missteps uh, with television. However, they were very, there were some very interesting things. Bill Rosendahl, who is just about to leave the Los Angeles City Council, uh, has been a member for quite a while, was an executive at Century Cable. And as part of his executive service, he had the best political interview show of anyone anywhere in the country. Everyone would be on his show. So it's 1994 and I'm running for office. First time. I have a Dana Buckman green silk jacket and six men are running against me. So Bill lines us up, three men and me and three men. So what's the visual that we get on his show for the debate? Gray suit, gray suit, gray suit, Sheila. Gray suit, gray suit, gray suit. You could turn the sound down and I would have won. You know, I mean, it was, it's powerful. It's more than just listening on the radio. And the visual nature of television, I think, from the very beginning, was the, the difficult thing about it and the, you know, the opportunity of it. Because it, it's visceral. It doesn't necessarily go through your brain as much. It just grabs you. And so with politics, if we would be talking like happened in Texas, but it happened to us on our gay bills. I brought the first bill to protect gay students in school. We had a three-hour debate. It's all televised on, you know, on the state, on C-SPAN or whatever. And people get kind of interested and caught up. You know, people would call my office in the morning and say, I was up listening to you guys until three in the morning. It's fascinating stuff. Television 
has completely opened that world. And you know, in the courts where you have cases about abused and neglected children, those used to be closed to television. And in Los Angeles County, Mike Nash, the chief judge, he said, no, we have to open those up. We want people to be able to see those proceedings. How are the judges making decisions about these children? It's very powerful.